Hello guys, welcome back to John's Workshop and in this video we're going to be making the extraction unit for the Eagle surface grinder. So if you go back to my previous episode, the Blether, Workshop Blether number 7 I think it was, I've just done, I included a small part of the manufacture of the spout piece that's going to do the collection of the dust next to the wheel, just the fabrication element and the remainder of the unit will be made in this episode all the way up to final painting and reassembly on the machine and test. So I'll bring you back very shortly as we get into the weeds of getting our steel cut that we need and starting to fabricate the framework that's going to hold the extraction unit in place. Now in the blether video that I did I walked through some potential ideas regarding how I was going to do this and I was talking about drilling holes in the side of the casting here to support the unit. Plenty of comments, rightly so, saying what a shame, well no, no, I didn't actually say what a shame to spoil a nice machine like that by drilling holes in it but that's roughly what, what, what they meant and I totally agree with them. So I've given it some thought and there were some good suggestions of different ways I could do it and so what we're going to do is come off the, the bolt down here that holds the head casting onto the base casting and we're going to try and utilize that bolt to make the framework. So bring it back in a minute when we get into the weeds of the manufacture. Right, this is the kind of bolt retaining plate that we're going to use that's going to be fitted to the back of the extraction tube. So this is just a bit of 6mm plate I got left over from the welding bench. So I've just one side of it was machined by me where I cut it off. So that's a nice good surface. I'm just going to sit on that now and just bring this down to finish size in the mill. Right, hopefully, if I've got my rough and ready maths right, yep, I think that's okay. Get that out of the way, get it deburred, cleaned up. So I know on my blether video, I don't know what came over me when I was roughly designing this, but I talked about using a, a countersunk head screw for this and making this a, a countersunk slot. But then as the more I thought about that, I thought, well, once this is captive up against the side of the extraction spout, there's going to be nothing stopping the head of the, the, head of the countersunk screw spinning. So we've opted for, that's perfect, that's fantastic, so I've opted for a slot and what I need to do now is I'm just going to set the collet block up in the mill and we're just going to machine, this is a stainless hex head, we're just going to machine 
a little bit off that hex head off the top. I'm doing it in the mill rather than the lathe because I don't want to bugger the threads up and I haven't got a collet chuck for the lathe so we'll do it in the mill. We'll just mill the top of that head down so it's just sub flush by probably half a mil underneath here and then that's that'll be sat in there and once all that's put together we're gonna go back to our extraction spout and basically we're gonna weld this onto the side of the extraction spout and that will be that stainless nut will be permanently captive. I'm not gonna weld it, I'm just gonna tack it just in four places probably and that stainless bolt will then be permanently captive in there to slide up and down but it can't spin obviously so next job is just modify this hex head Right then guys, this should be a giggle. Never done one of these before. I'm sure it's got a proper name. Don't know what it is. But, marked it out. A couple of minutes with a hacksaw. Chopped that out. Gone around with a file. Filed some chamfers on as well, preps. And we're now going to bend it and see what happens. Well, I'm happy with that. Alright then guys, you'll have seen me welding this up, which is the bracket. I <laughs> I could have bought some rubber bungs or something for the end of these, but I'd got some odd bits of scrap that were almost the right size, so I thought I'm just going to cut two bits of that, weld them in, grind it off flush, paint it, it'll be fine. So, interestingly, you'll have seen I used some tiny little I've got a, a whole stack of these that I bought donkeys years ago for something that I never really use. It's the neodymium magnets. And I thought I'll just use one of them because these were sort of dropping dropping down. And I thought if I just use one of them, prop it up onto the top, that will hold it while I tack it. And a bit of a learning curve, I never knew this, but the, the neodymium magnet I used on there obviously got quite hot um, with the welding heat. And it... I never knew this, but it's lost, permanently lost all its magnetism completely. So there you go, that's a learning curve for anyone who's messing around with neodymium magnets. If you get them hot, you may already know this, but I didn't, that it completely neutralises the magnetism, magnetic field within the magnet. So we've got that done, there's some holes to drill in, into that at some point, but before we get onto that... I'm going to now attack this. So we've got our we've got our captive nut bolt arrangement in the back. So the next job now is to try and work out how I'm going to get the hose on my shop vac to be a good fit into this square tube. So round peg in a square hole. And what I've done is just chop. This is some old. It was off an old fixture from donkeys years ago that's been 
it's some horrible grade of aluminium I don't know what it is but it really is horrible sticky stuff it's not really a lot of use for anything and they're just all off cuts with holes in and lumps and bumps so that's fine we'll, we'll use this square so I've chopped that to roughly plus, plus a little bit so what we're going to do now is probably square this up to the outside dimensions put it in the four jaw chuck bore my hole through the middle that I need for the a good fit on the hose and then we'll put it back up on the mill again and then I'm going to mill basically I'm going to mill a recess on all four sides so that that will then drop down inside the tube up to a shoulder all the way around onto the top and then I'm going to figure out at that point then how I'm going to fix that in there you know it only needs to be fixed in strong enough to hold the the hose in place so that when I pull the hose out this isn't coming out with it so I'll figure out how we're gonna I'm trying to avoid and that's why I went for the welding on this I didn't really want to weld this but I'm trying to avoid drilling and tapping so drilling holes through here and having bolts on the inside because of the grinding dust that's going to be going up through this any any threads or anything that poke through into this inside are almost going to become useless because you're going to really struggle to get them undone at some point in the future with the with the grinding dust so I'm trying to I'm trying to make this without any threads actually in the in the dirty side of the vacuum so we'll join you on the mill and we'll start blocking that out Well there we go, that's got that done on all four sides. What I've done is I've just started with a file on one of the corners, this one. I just need to file a bit of a radius on all four corners to match the radius on the inside of the box section. But it's not it's not a big job, it's aluminium, it's a couple of minutes a corner. So I'm just going to file those in. I have got a radius cutter but obviously because of this shoulder at the back I can't run. I can't run off there so a bit of firework and we'll just keep doing that till it fits once I've got that there I'll show you that in place and then it's onto the lathe for boring out all right guys a few minutes with the file and that's what we've got now so we've just radiused all the corners and again similar just around the top and that's now A good fit in there. I just thought we'd give this a test. I did have a concern about this sharp 90 degree bend here, still do. And I'm toying whether to bend a bit of steel up in a curved shape to 
to weld in. I can only really weld it at the front edge here, but I could leave it so it was tied up against the back wall in there, toying with the idea, but I've just dropped that on there. We'll just give it a try with the shock back, and I think you'll see that it's not required, hopefully. So I think that's more than enough suction, more than enough. So, and I realise I'm going to get a build-up of stuff in the back here, potentially, as it hits that back face as it goes in. I actually don't mind that. I'd rather it was, as it's coming off hot, I would rather it's building up here in the bottom than building up in the plastic pipe to then potentially because they do catch fire well they do they don't catch fire they smolder and this is only a plastic pipe so yeah I don't know it's all suck it and see but that's <laughs> excuse the pun but that's certainly more than enough suction on there so I'm not going to bother faffing around with a, a curved piece I don't I really don't think it needs it right guys slight change of plan from how I've originally talked about this in the recent blether video so I'd originally planned to I've, I've made this bit now it's all welded up I'd planned to screw that to the casting here and then drill my hole through here through this sort of horizontal piece that this would then fit through and I've had some feedback on my blether video and I've been thinking about it myself and I'm not I don't really want to deface this casting I don't know why I mean it's it's an old machine but it's a good machine and it's largely unspoiled and I don't want to spoil it really so I've been giving it some more thought and a couple of the guys had given me some feedback and I've come back out and looked at it again based on that feedback and they'd suggested why don't I try and fix something from the where the, the head casting screwed on so I've removed just this side of the head casting bolt for now and I've knocked up just this is a bit of angle iron so I've just cut this to length cut this section out and I've milled this so that that's flush with you know with the rest of the angle iron so there's no step there at all so plan B <laughs> I don't know what letter we're going to get up to but certainly plan B is to drill that out so that will sit on there we'll drill that out so that the the head casting bolt will go back through that don't need a longer bolt there's plenty of thread there was you know there was probably three or four mil of the thread sticking out the underside of the casting so I'm still going to have full engagement of thread in the in the casting so that's fine and then rather than so this angle piece <coughs> rather than having it sitting this way round I'm going to modify it I think and I can't show this because this guards in the way but largely it's going to sit this way round and I'm going to shorten so this will get welded that's why there's this upstand left here to, to weld this to this this will be further forward I'm going to shorten this piece and I'm going to have my horizontal piece coming out you know, this way, welded on. And I'm also probably going to put a support that goes down at an angle from under here back down to the bottom down here so that it's got a support underneath it. And I think I'm still not, <laughs> I'm still not decided how ugly that looks. But I, I, it will certainly do the job and it will certainly avoid drilling holes into the side of the head on the casting which I think is the right thing to do so I'm going to get some more bits of steel cut do a bit more measurement get a hole drilled in this piece and I'll bring you back when we're assembling this together or welding it together at least once I've made my measurements and got everything sorted out
Oh, there we go. Looks good from that angle, doesn't it? And looks good from that angle. Bang in the middle. And as I've always said, I've showed the good bits and the bad bits. Not looking too clever from that angle, is it? So, two things are wrong there. One, what I thought was square when I welded that end piece on isn't square. And I'm talking about this piece of box here. You can see it's running down at an angle. Not the end of the world, I suppose. It'll bug me forever, but I'm sort of prepared to live with it. But you can see the problem I've got. If I bring the table up, look what hits the table first, the extractor. So I have made a balls up. That's a polite way of putting it. So the next job is to try and work out what I do about that. Well there we go guys, that's corrected my mistake. So you can see, I'll just move you to the front. So this wheel's pretty much on its minimum, probably a tiny bit left in it, not much. And that's just about touching the table and I've got a good three quarters of an inch underneath there. And that's all rigid, it's not going anywhere. So the only thing left really is this drop droop of an angle that I've got going on this. Now I checked the squareness of this when I had the thing off and it's actually it's not that bad to the frame. What's happening is because it's just sat on the casting at the back the casting's actually beveled and the whole frame is leaning slightly downward so I could shim it up I suppose but for what it is I don't know it'll bug me that will because it's not <laughs> it's not horizontal but I'm sure I'll get over it. So next job now is to get some degreaser all over it and then get it ready for, for paint. But like I say it's I mean it's got a bit of movement on it, you'd expect that with that big overhang on the frame, but it's pretty rigid, it's not going anywhere. So pleased with that. So I'll bring you back once we've Got a coat of paint on it. Well, there we go guys, that's the first coat of paint on. I've got second coat to go on and this is, I'm using Smoothrite, Hammerite Smoothrite metal paint. It's the same stuff I use to do the vice. And this is just brush painting, but I thought this might be a tip for anybody. So this has only had its first coat, I've got a second coat to go on yet, but the finish is pretty good for brush, you know, for brush. And the way to get to this, and it's not perfect, it's never going to be as good as spray, but you can use this stuff without getting brush marks, without it looking too brush painted. And the way to do that is, if you've got a heat gun, you warm this stuff up. So you need, you know, the best way to get this on is to have cold, coldish, you know, as cold as you can get them, sort of ambient temperature steel and warm paint and... You, what, what the warm paint does it allows it as you put it on you'll get the brush lines in it just leave it and it will morph itself together between the brush strokes and that works reasonably well so you know if you're looking at the sort of finish I've got on there that's pretty good for brushed so I've got a second coat to go on which I'm going to do now and then we'll bring you back when it's all reassembled and on the machine just a point of note, I've got my heat gun out ready to warm the paint up for the second coat. You do this really carefully and really gently and at a good distance away. This stuff as it says on the tin is pretty flammable so you need to be careful when you're doing this. The best way of doing it is in warm water ideally, uh, you know, in a, in a pan full of warm water or something that's the safest way. I've not got that out here so I'm just going to give it a gentle warm with the, with the heat gun reasonably safe but do this at your own risk guys you know read the warnings shouldn't really do it this way there is always a risk that you're going to catch it on fire i'll bring you back later if i'm still here well there we go guys 
probably not the prettiest thing in the world but certainly not the ugliest by any stretch of the imagination so we've got it all finished painted fixed to the machine all nice and sturdy you know there's a little bit of flex in that arm but not not a lot so happy with that and I'll just shift the camera my non horizontal OCD issue that I'd got has almost gone away so what I've done there is I told you all it was going to bug me and bug me it did so I have shimmed carefully shimmed up the underside of the bit of angle iron to get that somewhere near horizontal looking so happy with that next job is we'll give it a quick test you can see I've had a bit of a go already I just got these parallels on these are the ones that I use all the time I've already cleaned them up this way I'm just gonna give them a flash over on the other sides and we'll just show you that as part of the test There we go guys, that's the extraction system complete, got a bit more tweaking to do with it just to get it spot on but I think that demonstrates, you know, there's a bit of escapey muck you could see going under and around it but not a lot so that's about a 70-80% solution I think in terms of getting rid of the worst of the muck so that's 70-80% or of the muck that's generated on this machine that's not going to be floating around in the workshop landing over the slideways and tables on the other machine tools so happy with that so there's a bit more to do to this machine yet next job really is this table magnetic tables coming off we're going to grind the base table we're going to grind the underside of the magnetic table and then we're going to grind the top of the magnetic table so that I know all of that's true to itself but before I do that I'm going to go and check out all the slideways, take out any play, that kind of thing might film some of that, I'm probably going to give you guys a break from surface grinder videos for a while we've done three or four sort of on the bounce now so we'll probably move on to something else for a little bit but that's kind of upcoming work and then the final job once I've ground the table I want to make myself a, um, a fence I don't think that's the right word on surface grind, but a back rail that, that fits down the back of the magnet and onto the front so that you can grind the front face of that and then you've got something square to push things up against. So that's another job to do and that'll be coming up at some point in the future. So I hope you enjoyed that. A bit more progress on the grinder. I'm really pleased with that. You know, as I've said many, many times, I'm not a welder. Um, certainly not a fabricator so I'm, I'm learning every time I do a job I learn a little bit more and my welds getting better I think it's, it's a lot better than it used to be and I'm being a bit more adventurous with joints and things like that so it's all that's all good I'm enjoying doing that kind of stuff so we'll leave it there for now guys so thank you all for watching thank you for subscribing as always thank you to the new subscribers that are coming along and we will catch you all very soon on another video when we'll be making something else.